Hey everybody, Rob Maurer here on the last day of Tesla's first quarter, and I thought today we would spend some time going through Q1 delivery estimates. Remember, we should get Tesla's Q1 delivery and production report this week on either Thursday or Friday. Based on previous Q1 reports, I think the most likely time that this is published is before market open, probably about 30 to 60 minutes before market open, Friday morning. So today I want to look at what we should expect to receive in this report, what the current fact set consensus among Wall Street analysts is for Tesla's Q1, and then anything else that we should be looking for specifically when Tesla issues this report. Starting off with the fact set consensus numbers, as I always say when we talk about these numbers, this doesn't necessarily matter a whole lot to me, but the media does use this as a benchmark, and oftentimes we'll see headlines comparing Tesla's actual deliveries with what the fact set consensus is. So while many of us are doing our own analysis and coming up with our own numbers or drawing from different sources of information than Wall Street, this fact set consensus is important because it helps shape the narrative post-report. So let's look at the numbers here, then we'll go through my estimates and then some of the wild cards. So Q1 2020 fact set consensus estimate as of Tuesday, March 31st, today, total deliveries is 91,694 vehicles. Most media outlets are going to report this as 92,000. Quickly looking at the breakdown by vehicle, the consensus for Model S is right around 7,300 units, Model X right around 6,600, and Model 3 at 78,700. Those actually sum up to be about 1,000 vehicles more than the total delivery consensus. The reason that those are not equivalent is because not every analyst breaks it down by vehicle type, so the breakdown is only a consensus of a portion of the analyst reporting to fact set. Generally, just that total number, 91.7 or 92,000, will be used by the media. If deliveries did come in at that 91,700 level, that would be down 18% from Q4 deliveries of 112,000. But on the year-over-year -year comparison, we would be up 46% from the 63,000 vehicles delivered last year in Q1. As we've talked about, last year's Q1 was pretty tough from a delivery perspective, so that is kind of a low benchmark. Tesla in Q1 last year produced 77,000 vehicles and then just delivered 63,000, so a 14,000 vehicle spread there between deliveries and production, which was the highest of all time. We'll talk a little bit more about that spread here in a second, but on these estimates, I think if Tesla did come in at 92,000 deliveries, Wall Street would be happy with that. Obviously, no one is expecting that quarter over quarter growth, with the consensus here being down 18% quarter over quarter. And given the macro environment that we're in right now, I think that 46% growth year over year number would stick out as a strong positive in this market. I also think just speculatively that this fact set number though it is current as of today, probably lags expectations a little bit as some analysts may not have actually updated their expectations recently. So speculatively, I think the true number that Wall Street expects is probably lower. And we had some indication of this a couple of days ago in an article on nasdaq.com. And as a part of this article, they mentioned the fact set estimate, but also said, quote, investors Jonas speaks with are expecting something in the low 80,000 range, end quote. So while the fact set number is the best that we have to go off of, the true expectations of Wall Street may actually be a little bit lower than that. Now I want to take a look at the likelihood of Tesla achieving a number in that ballpark and give some of my estimates. Thankfully, Elon did give us a little bit of help here on production for the quarter when he tweeted on March 9th, that Tesla just produced their 1 millionth vehicle. So we went through the math on that. That implied that Tesla had produced 81,000 vehicles, roughly, so far quarter to date, which implied a production rate of about 1,180 vehicles per day through that point. We also know that Tesla shut down production at Fremont at the end of the day, March 23rd. And for the couple days prior to that, they were winding down, doing an orderly shutdown. But if we take that quarter to date production rate as of March 9th and extrapolate that linearly through March 22nd, that would get you to just under 97,000 vehicles produced. The biggest question mark there is what was that production rate for that period of time? There are two factors that should have driven that production rate above what it had been so far quarter to date, and that is Model Y and Gigafactory Shanghai production. Both of those should have been increasing, meaning the total production rate should have been increasing as well, which may have pushed us up a couple of thousand above that 97,000 level by March 22nd. But the other wild card is what was the production level those few days when Tesla was winding down operations before the shutdown. And that might take you back down a couple of thousand vehicles. So as of March 22nd, I think a number around 97,000 is pretty reasonable. And then you have nine more days in the quarter, which of course is going to hinge on production strictly from Gigafactory Shanghai. 
Now, there have been rumors that Tesla is capable of producing 3,000 vehicles per week at Gigafactory Shanghai. I've talked before about how we should be a little bit skeptical of that. But if there were ever a point in time where Tesla is going to push to maximize production over a week period of time, it's going to be the last week of the quarter. That will allow Tesla to report that last week when they give this update, which we'll talk about a little bit more in a second as well. But if they are able to do 3,000 in a week and they keep that rate for nine days, then you could be looking at Gigafactory Shanghai adding another 38 or 3,900 vehicles to the number that we had produced by March 22nd. That's best case for Shanghai for those last nine days. I think more realistically, we're probably looking at somewhere between 2,500 and 3,000 vehicles, which ends up putting total production somewhere right around 100,000, maybe a little bit higher if Tesla's production rate from the 9th through the 22nd was higher than the quarter to date rate from January 1st through March 9th, and maybe a little bit lower if the shutdown did start in earnest a few days ahead of March 23rd. So no matter which way I come at this, I pretty much end up with production numbers between 98,000 and 103,000. So I think I'll midpoint my estimate for production right around 101,000, but there are a lot of contingencies based on those unknowns that we've discussed. So that is production, but how does that relate to deliveries? As we've talked about last year in Q1, Tesla produced 14,000 more vehicles than they delivered. The biggest reason that spread was so significant is that was the first quarter Tesla was shipping the Model 3 outside of North America. So they had a lot more vehicles in transit or stuck not being able to be delivered. So we're not really in that same circumstance this year. But on the other hand, the last three quarters, Tesla has delivered more vehicles than they have produced by 16 and a half thousand. That has drained Tesla's finished vehicle inventory pushing vehicle inventory down to just 11 working days, the lowest level in the last four years. Additionally, Tesla has never had a first quarter where they have delivered more vehicles than they have produced. So we should expect delivery numbers to trail behind production numbers this quarter. The question is by how much. Before we had the production shutdown, a spread of 15,000 to 20,000 vehicles wouldn't have surprised me at all. But because of that shutdown, Tesla has a full nine days to deliver vehicles without producing anything out of Fremont. And yes, the general conditions right now make deliveries a little bit more difficult, but they will still be greater than zero over that nine days. So as that number grows, that spread will come down. Typically at the end of the quarter, Tesla is delivering more than a thousand vehicles per day. So obviously a lot of unknown here, but having those nine days to deliver with no Fremont production means that that spread could come down by roughly 10,000 vehicles. So then you're saying, okay, maybe if the spread was gonna be 15,000 to 20,000 vehicles before, and we now reduce that by 10,000, maybe you're looking at a spread of 5,000 to 10,000 vehicles. This is a huge variable and it's very difficult to predict, but I think erring on the side of caution given all the macro environment situation right now, 10,000 is not an unreasonable number. So if we look at production and my midpoint is 101,000 and we say 10,000 spread between production and deliveries, that would put delivery potential at 91,000, which would be just below the fact set consensus. I think that's pretty reasonable, but the big question then is, okay, what is the demand situation and how much has that impacted Tesla's ability to deliver these vehicles that they have available? That's another big unknown, but personally, I think the bigger demand hit is going to come in Q2. I think people taking delivery in Q1 probably already had finances lined up. They've probably had this decision made for a while. Tesla's probably not able to sell as many vehicles from inventory at the end of the quarter, but I don't think that's going to be some massive hit. And while Q1 in general is a much seasonally weaker quarter, and we have seen some tax changes that should be impacting this quarter negatively, Tesla's held prices. We haven't seen any adjustment to prices, even though Tesla's probably had some room that they could have brought some things down. We also know that Tesla fought really hard to keep Fremont open and to keep production running here at the end of the quarter. And I kind of doubt they would have tried that hard to stay open with production if they were already in a huge oversupply situation to close the quarter. So I think all of these things being considered, my expectations for deliveries probably falls between 85 and 91,000, which I guess midpoints at 88,000. So if you have to put me down for an estimate, I guess that's the one to do. But there's so much variability on deliveries and what that variance will be with production that if I really get a plant to flag, not on a number, but on an idea, I want to plant the flag on variability because really there is no good way to know this quarter. The best we can do is put together all this information and assign probabilities as I've attempted to do here. 
Aside from that, there are things here that I'm actually more interested in than the delivery numbers. In general, I care more about production. This quarter, I would say deliveries are a little bit more important given the macro uncertainty. But I'm going to be looking at production, and then I'm also going to be looking for any updates that Tesla shares aside from just the delivery and production numbers. I think these are perhaps the most important things, and there are three things I'm watching for here. First off, what does Tesla do about guidance? We know that in the Q4 report, Tesla said that they expect to comfortably exceed 500,000 vehicles delivered this year. Will Tesla reaffirm that guidance? Will they lower their guidance? Or will they simply say nothing about that guidance? To get an idea of what we should expect here, I went back and looked at every single delivery and production report Tesla's given so far, 20 in total. And of those 20 reports, Tesla has given some sort of an update on guidance, whether reaffirming or updating on a production rate target, something of that nature. The classifications are a little bit fungible here, but in general, that's happened in 12 of 20 reports, so 60% of the time. If we isolate on the last 12 quarters, in 10 of those 12 quarters, Tesla has given some sort of an update like that. So that's 83% of the time the last three years. Not all of those have necessarily been reaffirming guidance, but some of those reports are also Q4 reports, which Tesla would have no reason to reaffirm guidance at that point for the year. But if we look at strictly reaffirming full year guidance, Tesla has done that 50% of the time in first half quarters. So there's a lot of uncertainty. I think a lot of people would forgive Tesla if they did lower their guidance with this report. That may actually even be expected. However, I think Tesla is going to reaffirm guidance here. Elon has been pretty vocal about this whole situation on Twitter, calling the panic dumb, saying multiple times that he doesn't think additional ventilators will be needed, but they're willing to help if they are. And as recently as March 19th, saying on Twitter, quote, based on current trends, probably close to zero new cases in US 2 by end of April, end quote. So my premise here is that that 500,000 number, I think Tesla believed that that was very easily achievable for them. I think they expect that they can do actually 600,000 or more vehicles. And if Elon does still feel that new cases in the US are going to be approaching zero by the end of April, that means this is a short-term issue in nature, and there would be very little reason to change Tesla's guidance because of that. I also believe that Elon probably wants to help ease concerns by showing strength here, given the commentary and the position that he seems to be taking around this issue so far. I could see a situation where they use language increasing the uncertainty, but still reaffirming, perhaps saying something like, we recognize that there is a lot of uncertainty in the market right now, but at the present time, we do still expect to be able to deliver 500,000 vehicles or more this year. So this is all, of course, very speculative, but any sort of update here on guidance will be looked at, of course, very closely by Wall Street, perhaps outweighing the actual delivery and production report numbers. And I do think a reaffirmation of guidance would be a strong positive. Next, I'll be looking for an update on Gigafactory Shanghai. Again, I expect Tesla to want to show as much strength as possible with this report, and a huge part of that strength will be their production from Gigafactory Shanghai. I expect Tesla is doing every single thing they can to get this final week of production from Gigafactory Shanghai to be as high as possible so that they can report that number in this production report and allow people to use that high rate to extrapolate for the rest of the year. Not only that, I also expect them to talk about their targeted production rate moving forward perhaps giving us an update on when they want to achieve 5,000 per week from Gigafactory Shanghai. With China coming out of lockdown now, I think Tesla is going to want to emphasize their presence there as much as they possibly can. Finally, I'm going to be looking for an update on Model Y. I think Tesla will share delivery and production numbers for Model Y. And while that Model Y production number would have been much more interesting if Fremont hadn't been shut down for the last week of the quarter, there's still a lot of potential here for Tesla to give us an update on the status of the Model Y program. In terms of Model Y deliveries, we continue to see the highest VIN sighting in the 3000 range, so that puts a ceiling on the delivery numbers we could expect, and of course every VIN in that range is not going to be delivered. The other data point that we have here is from Troy Testlike's Model Y tracking survey, and in that tracker, right now about 170 people have put their delivery date for the Model Y in before the end of the quarter. So I guess that sort of sets a floor for us. Obviously not every single person is going to enter their deliveries in this tracker. In fact, I would be pretty surprised if even 10% were. So again, kind of a wide range here, but I think deliveries for Model Y are going to come in around 1500 for the quarter. 
We went through what a number like that could mean for Model Y potential for this year in a previous episode that I'll link to here. But the gist of it is, is that once the Model 3 hit 1500 deliveries in a quarter, over the following three quarters, so cumulatively across those four quarters, Tesla delivered 84,000 of those Model 3. So pending the shutdowns, under normal circumstances, there is no reason Tesla couldn't exceed that type of a number for Model Y deliveries this year. Even 100,000 or more wouldn't be out of the question. But again, the shutdown will obviously have some impact on what that looks like, and we'll definitely revisit that topic. So those are the big things I'm looking for. Production, maybe 101,000. Deliveries, maybe 88,000. And then an eye out for an update on Guidance, Gigafactory Shanghai, and Model Y. That is it for today though. As always, thank you for listening. Don't forget to subscribe and sign up for notifications. If you are enjoying the podcast and you want to support it, you can find more details about doing that at patreon.com slash Podcast. And also make sure you're following me on Twitter at teslapodcast. And with that, I'll see you tomorrow for the Wednesday, April 1st episode of Tesla Daily. Thank you.